episode 531. Oh, what are you doing? You know, I am uh, recovering, so to speak. Well, recovering, not really recovering. I'm uh, on the come down, maybe, from a first date I went on for the first time in a really long time. The one, you know, I was all nervous about in the last episode. Is it like riding a horse? <laughs> Wait, a bike. <laughs> Just a back of the saddle. No, didn't <laughs> didn't quite get to riding a horse stage. Mm-hmm. You know, but did it feel comfortable for you? Because you know, <sighs> right? You've been off the market. I've been off the market, and you know, it's hard to go on a first date because, like, I have to remind. This was like my first date after like a series of like long term relationships too. Right. So That's it's what I mean. like a different energy. You have to be like. I, I think I also go in with like. The same comfort of like somebody I've known for a really long time, you know. Well, yeah, you mean you do that? Yes, I do that too. Yes, like, we're like. Yes, I almost feel like the more anxious I become, the more casual I become. This, it's this terrible. Is me. What is wrong with us? Yes, you're. To- that is totally it. Like, I'll so I'm like being all yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. Yes, but it's like an overcompensation thing. One hundred percent. You are totally hitting the nail on the head, and I think that really um, bit me in the butt or came back to like, uh, you know, it wasn't the best thing for the, cause Why? that started early. And I think I, 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 I started, you? yeah. Like, I think when I got nervous, I started getting a little too casual and maybe being like, I think, you know, and our, 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 our text messages were like, you know, flirty text messages. And then, well, cause just to preface, yeah. I mean, it was a yes. blind date, but it yes. was set up by a brainiac. Yes. On Twitter. And then do you know, I forget if you said to me when we, before the date, mm-hmm. whether you knew why they thought you guys I would do be. I do not. So it wasn't yeah. said, you guys should get together because. They said, um, oh, he, he, he likes therapy and you're a therapist and, or like he goes to therapy and you're a therapist, which, you know interesting reasons for uh and then like he loves uh, or like loves animals and you love animals and i'm all about like yeah i'll go on a date with i mean not anybody i've got you know some Mm -hmm. criteria but i'll you know i'll uh if if people think it would be a good idea sure let's do it okay and so i was very i'm very like open optimistic like oh hello me of course i'm optimistic about it and uh yeah, you know, so, and I was feeling, like, really, really good going into it. Like, we were definitely, like, hitting it off, like, via text message and everything. And, like, but I'll say, I don't know if this is just, like, like, maybe I'm a prude. Maybe it's just me. But I feel like, like, things, like, got more, like, like R-rated in the text messages. Yeah. And when that happens, it kind of takes the whole, like... Uh, I don't know, the nature of the relationship or, like, how it starts or what relationship, whatever, one day, like, how things start in a different direction, Mm -hmm. you know? There's, like... uh, Well, when in the flirtatious texting... Yeah. Was that welcome by you? Oh, Were yes, you like, oh, yes, this thank is you. fine. Yes, it was, it was, it was welcome. That's the problem is that like, yeah, and I'm like witty and so I'll like do it back. And then I think I gave too much of a green light for like that to be like, oh, that's how we're joking. And then when it was in real life and those jokes were like, it's easier when I can like, I'm on the screen and they can't see my face and like I can make the joke back and it's like, you don't see me squirm. Well, and you can think about what you want your answer to be. And I about it and like, ooh. And then in person when those jokes were, you know, kind of like, like more sexual in nature, like as, you know, a first date might be or maybe somebody who like jokes like that. I, it made me like feel like you know how I am. I answer everything. If somebody asks me a question, I'm like terrible, and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll answer this. Right. And I think that I learned that maybe I I could like I don't have to answer every question, mm-hmm. you know. And so I had a good time and I had fun, but it felt like we had we were looking kind of for different things. Well, did in you? Relationships. So do you think it was yeah. meant to be just a hookup then? It felt like that was what he was looking for. Okay. Yeah. It felt like that was what he was looking for because like, and I think, I don't think, I know I'm looking for something like, I really want to get to know a person. I like care about what makes them them, you know, Mm -hmm. more than what you can just see. And I think especially for people like, you know, us who have some kind of face in the, and by us, I mean like you and me here, Suze, Um, but like people who are sort of in the public eye, like because I see, and I've seen on the show how 
the person that we see on TV is not everything. Mm-hmm. Is that's not the full person. So I really and like, hello, I'm a therapist. Like, what do I do? I want to see. I want to see all the sides that you don't really that you can't Google that you can't you know see from watching you know them on TV or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it maybe felt like like either he wasn't in the same place of of. Or maybe, like, wasn't used to having somebody ask those kind of questions. I think that's it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. You know, the thing is, like, I'm out of practice. And so, yeah, but you know. Then that, that's what makes me wonder. Mm-hmm. That's why I kind of said, is it like riding a bike or a horse? Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, that book I read, Nothing Personal, mm-hmm. about, like, dating now, especially, like, dating right. apps. I think that the that sort of hookup y vibe is just the default okay. setting. Okay. That's now. what maybe I was thinking too, that that's the default setting. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I'm going with this. And then when it was in the moment, I was like, no, I don't, this isn't what. Especially if that's all that it is. Yeah. I mean, that can be a part of it. Because I know he's on dating apps and I'm not. And that was like a question he'd ask me, like, oh, are you on dating apps? And like, I'm, you know, if people are, like, yeah, get after it. But I think maybe if you're used to that or if that's kind of how it is. Like, the more I learn about it, the more it's like when people say dating app, it's a sex app. It's totally. That's what that is. Yeah, it feels like a hookup app. Because when you're going on a date, you, Sarah, and you're thinking like you might meet a partner. Yes. That is, I don't think that's what other people are doing. Right. I think that they're like, yeah. But don't they want to have a boyfriend or girlfriend? Not him. Right. I just mean the, yeah, population the population at large. Yeah. I mean, you'd think. One would think. Because eventually most people would want to pair off. Yes. It just feels like there's always something around the corner when you have the... Especially in LA. It's always right, like that. Right. You know. Okay. And it, 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 it... Yeah. And so it felt a little to me like first dates were probably really easy for him. Mm. And people were... Um, and it felt like... Yeah, and that like maybe because I don't know, mm-hmm. and so it was it, not like it was well, harder so like, for me. In your mind, but, when you guys parted ways, yeah. yeah, were you like maybe that is the first of many, or were you like that was just one mm-hmm. and done? Well, I felt like I almost wanted a not like a do over, mm-hmm. but like a okay, well, this was this. Like, is there an opportunity to kind of have another chance to kind of get to know more of you and who you are? Because it felt like, you know, he asked me like to pick a, because he's not from the area, like pick a bar Mm -hmm. in the area. So I picked a bar. And then when we got to the, we went He specifically said bar. he said bar. And so I'm like, okay, I'll pick a bar. And, you know, I'd pick a totally- Did he say why he wanted a bar? uh, Something about, uh, you know, if it goes like the way of my- other dates maybe or something about like a, a I don't know maybe like a history of of getting roped in to having to have dinner with somebody I oh, think this man. might be the general I think this might be also like how people like I think Set that's also a result of the dating app thing is that there's this like I are they not worthy into it. are they worthy of dinner I am not fine with that. It felt that. a little like that because then when we were like at dinner, he's like, oh, can we order apps? And I'm like, or let's order some apps. And then we order an app and he's like, okay, I'm hungry. Let's have dinner. And I was like, well, this isn't where I would have wanted like to you go passed, for dinner. You passed the apps test? Yeah, I passed okay. the apps test. And it felt like, and like, cause now I'm like, oh, this is like bar food. Like if we were going out to a restaurant, I would have liked a, a dinner where we can talk and like I can, you know, it's like a loud bar and we're like yelling over a table and it was a communal table. No yes. way. That to me is not as intimate and as like. You basically had a picnic. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Communal. Yeah. So that was like, and, and, you know, in fairness, like I did pick the road, but he got there first. And, you know, I, it just felt like it was set up for something more casual than what I had guessed. Yeah, but. And I was not- happy I didn't wear heels because my outfit did say casual. Okay, but we're not 20. Right, right. True. To me, everything is, is. It, I, I feel like I'm at the age where, like, I don't want to. I don't want to casually. I want to be like treated. Yeah, please. Like I, because you know what I will. What they eventually will get back is really good. I do not love like that idea where nobody has to put in any effort anymore. It did feel a little bit like that. 
It but felt maybe like, we're just old. Or maybe I'm just old. Well, <laughs> and you know, I, I wouldn't go, I'm not going on dates with anybody who hasn't been to therapy. Right. So, so that's for some people, it's a requirement this. these days. I mean, you should also do it for betterment and healing, but yes, also to get dates. Um, BetterHelp is great because you can access um, professional counseling from your phone or your computer, from your house. It's so convenient. It's all digital. It's not self-help. This is the real deal. And they have qualified counselors that deal with family conflicts, LGBT stuff, grief, self-esteem, anxiety, whatever it is that is on your mind, they can help you with. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aids available. And they have clients uh, service available for clients worldwide. So there you go. Uh, we want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash brain candy. And a lot of people like are happy that the world's going back to normal, but are still struggling. And yeah, so maybe you're one of those well, people. Uh, and Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it just can be like, there's like a, a social hangover that like, yeah, we have you get now of like you go out and it's like oh my god that was draining and it is hard to get you know back in the swing of things and yeah so you know. get all the help you can yeah man and maybe and maybe and you know what I, like I have this <sighs> thing like uh, part there's that feeling of like ah, am I asking for too much yeah I don't I'm fine with that I'm mm-hmm. fine with it this is this is you know and and the other thing the the thing that and so afterwards I kind of had that feeling of like. Oh, you know, I'd like a do-over of this. I'd like, you know, give us like a second, like not in a bar scene yeah, to like yeah, yeah. chat more a and get to know him, meal. and like a proper like get to know you. Or even like not doesn't even have to be a meal. Like let's go on like a day date somewhere to like really like talk and like hang out and like get to know each other. What do you like to do? What are your I don't but know, he just wanted to like maybe go to Lookout Point or whatever. Yeah, I think <laughs> whatever maybe the kids do. do. Like whatever the kids do. Darn. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And. uh did and it break the seal though? Where you're yes, like, okay, now for I can sure. date. Okay. For sure it did. Okay. And then I was like, oh, okay. And now I know um, because I will uh, – one of the things that that I feel like should naturally come with grown-up relationships is like none of those stupid like wait to text them or like three days. Like no, that's no. stupid. That's some – that's dumb. That Every, and we all know everybody's on their phone all the time. And when you're back and forth with me before yeah. we go out and it's like – Really and then it good gets banter, real quiet. and then it's like crickets. I'm like, ah, oh, that's not either. You, you weren't interested. Which, if that's the case, I am fine with that. Hello, we know if I ain't your cup of tea, don't drink it. We literally made that merch. <laughs> right. I know that so well. I have merch that says that. <laughs> I am totally fine if I'm not your cup of tea. Yeah, agree. I'm okay, mm-hmm. and I can take it. And I'm a lot of people's. So yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like Earl Grey over here. You know, maybe some people don't like it, but the majority of the population does. Right, yeah, right, right. Up, so there you go. Um, uh, and so yeah, so yeah. But, I, uh, okay, what if he were to text you and be like, "That was so much fun. Let's go to dinner. Let's go somewhere like fancy." Well, what you know, I you gave to, I gave him some time to do that, okay. and after about three days. Uh, I, you know, of, of nothing, I just sent him a text message and said, you know, thanks. I had some good times with you, but I think you and I are, I just have different, we're are looking for different things. No okay, problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how, how did that get received? Like, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. You know, oh, which man. I feels like, okay. So he thought the same. I just said it first. And so, Do you, you know, think maybe I, look, we don't know. I can we only, don't yeah, we I don't know. know. I'm just not in the, uh. You know, I, I like, uh, I know, I'm very clear, I'm very, yeah, and and I'm not, I don't, it was a, I don't know. It was a good, just one time yes. deal. And I am super grateful to the Brainiacs for setting me up. This so is exactly fun. how I wanted to happen. Yeah. It's really like, it's super fun. It's great. Mm-hmm. It's, you know. So you're open to like. Oh, yeah. Suggestions. Yeah. I'm open okay. to anything. I, uh, you know, I feel like the bar that you guys, uh, come on, let, let's let, let me just like, like, it's not anybody people. Uh, they, <laughs> you have to say, would this person go camping with Sarah? Mm. That is it. That's and I just didn't question. get the vibe that he would go camping with me. Oh, okay. That was, I think it. And I think in my head, I know it sounds silly. No, nail in the coffin but, right there. Uh, but you know, in, in my marriage, I 
that was one. It was when we went on that, that you know, that road trip, and mm-hmm. the, the camping trip and the trailer where I was like, yeah, I don't think you'll be able to do this with me. And that was when I said I have to get a divorce. Mm-hmm. I want to get a divorce. So I think that's kind of been my own little like – Litmus bar, test. Like, yeah, yeah, so a litmus test of mm-hmm. would you go camping on t- with me and what would you be like? Mm-hmm. I just don't think that he would. You don't have the same approach to that. Sort yeah, of we don't thing. have the same approach to camping, which is freaking <laughs> fine. Camping. Not a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, and really I really narrow the field. Yeah, this is, this is like a, you know, Again, if I ain't your cup, it's no problem, you know. Okay. So I'm, well, I'm good with it. I do, I will say, I don't need to be nervous next time. Heck no. I was way too nervous for... What were you scared of? Or whatever whatever word you would use. I mean, you know what? Honestly, rejection. Yeah. And now that it felt a little bit like rejection, and I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And then I, I was like, oh, I'm not going to let... I'm not going to sit here waiting to be rejected. Yeah. I'm going to just say, well, okay, it seems like you're not really feeling it. Let me just do it for you. And then it was like freeing. I No joke, Susie, like haven't really done that before. Mm-hmm. I, well, of course, I've been married for forever and then – not forever, but, you know, and then in long-term relationships. So I didn't really have the opportunity with the knowledge that I have now, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess when Ren and I started dating, there were a few people, a couple people that I was, you know, cat, like – went on a couple dates with that I did say like hey thanks for fun times but I'm you know seeing somebody else yeah so I've definitely said that I've got I've I've said that but I've never just said you know had some I'm basically I don't ever want to ghost anybody yeah I think we should all just be honest with our you know how we feel Mm -hmm. and and everybody's a grown-up here right yeah, right. You know, I did give him a kiss though, and he was a good kisser. Okay, that's but I good. won a bet because we were betting over the Clippers and Suns game. Yeah, you're not a the, Welcher, right? Come on, you know, so a I'm bet's like, a bet. A bet's a bet over here. Give me a kiss, <laughs> and that was fun. So right. I'll take that. All right, good enough. Yeah. Well, on to the next. On to the next. All right. Yeah. All um, right. Okay. So moving on. Here's a fun fact for you. There is not more to this story. This is just something I wanted to share. (laughs) On the International Space Station, there is no such thing as laundry day. Right now, an astronaut needs about 150 pounds of clothes in space per year and will wear their clothes, gym, underwear, everything, until they cannot stand the smell. And then they throw the clothes away, ejecting the shirts to eventually (gasps) burn up in the atmosphere. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) the option that they chose i would never be able to i wouldn't be able to go to space on that alone for that yeah because it's like space litter oh my god i didn't even think about that <laughs> Wait, first well, of all there's reason? space litter everywhere so it's a real problem well, but my problem is true yeah i i mean I, I i've definitely lost i mean not tons of sleep but maybe like a couple minutes here and there over <laughs> The amount, like, what will happen with all the trash in space. Don't get me started. Like, it is hours with what will happen with all the trash in the ocean. You know, Susie, I just don't yeah, like litter. Yeah, it's not good. Um, uh, but my big problem with that is that I am a sensitive lady who <laughs> has sensitive okay. skin. And if I were to wear clothes that I sweat in yeah. again, what? I'm definitely like getting like like I'm breaking out on my arms. You're I'm getting, getting those rash. butt bumps. Oh, well, so that's what you know, I'm like when you though. wear workout pants. No, 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 no. Let's there, say, where's the hygiene here? Let's and also, say you had to no do this hygiene stuff. on the space station seems like not right. That seems like the place we should be being the most hygienic. It says they couldn't find a way to clean the clothes in space. Okay. Look, I love how I always love how I think that I, Sarah. The podcast host. I'm going to single-handedly solve. You're like, let me get this. This, this age-old problem. Yeah, I read a separate article about how the one appliance they can't really figure out how to make is a refrigerator for space too. So they're working on that. Yeah. Also, I apologize for the leaf blower. Oh, that's I thought happening. it was a printer. I was like, oh, she's uh, getting some paperwork no, done. Could you imagine? The show. <laughs> if I'm just printing. No, but we're not doing this on our regular day, and this happens to be yeah, a don't leaf worry. blower day. So that's fun for everybody. You get what to, like, I want to little... know, though, is let's say you did have to wear your underwear indefinitely. Oh, How long God. do you think it would take before you couldn't stand the smell? In de- like a week? <sighs> no, 
It's not about the <laughs> smell. It's about just the the yuck factor. No, but that's I know. they have to do it until they can't stand the smell. They smells. have to do it until they can't stand the smell. That's sort oh, of arbitrary. For fuck's so sake. Maybe you'd be like, well, I'm one day I can't stand the smell, and then right. you throw it out the window of the rocket. I mean, because I've I've picked up some some like, oh my god, like oh, my ex husband used to wear his gym clothes. They would get so sweaty. And then he would drape them over the back of our kitchen like di- like chairs. Gross. I got so fucking mad at him for this. I was like, get your <laughs> mil... Like, because I was like, then it gets bacteria yes. all over the back of my chairs. And then are you the one cleaning the chairs? Yeah. No, I am. So don't do that. And so like, I think about how gross those clothes were after a one time here's what i would do and not fucking work out on the space station <laughs> yeah plan number one i will take Send that Terry. lower lower bone density <laughs> i don't care i'm yeah. not living in bacteria filled clothing thank you're you you're so right the end Step it's one. gone pretty well for me in covid Be during lazy. quarantine i didn't work out a single day for that year that's I, about are the you time basically so refusing spent. to answer the question though of how long yes how long would i think you it'd be like two days two days you'd wear a shirt and then well, you'd be like d- okay Fuck this. but like how long are we are we like talking working out it said gym so i guess oh, i mean God. gym clothes like workout clothes I work they out because do I don't. I don't think you can. I don't think I could. Go, oh god! But then I dry it. No, because like when I'm camping, I I've definitely been on a long. Yeah. You know what? Yep. And I've done a challenge. Mm-hmm. I wore some really stinky. Cl- I had yeah. clothes covered in fish guts. Yeah. For multiple days. Oh, like, this is you not get a problem. Into a different mindset, I think. When yeah. You're in okay. These okay. I'm putting it. Okay. This. This is. You know what the problem is? Is I feel like movies about the space. Day, movies about space that often take place in the future mm-hmm. have really confused me on what life is actually like on a space station. <laughs> because I see it as them like walking around in these like very sterile suits Sarah, that are like what? What would be an example of a movie like this? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Interstellar. <laughs> You're like, you know those movies. You don't know, <laughs> do you, Susie? You have no idea what I'm talking about. Right, I'm like, oh what does she God, mean I'm in the dying. future? I'm dying. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. <laughs> Oh. Like, was it in your head, though, and you didn't want to say it? No, I swear Me to God. Neither, until just then. <laughs> I was just... Oh god! I'm oh, <laughs> the running joke of you never watching Interstellar <laughs> when I know it will be your favorite movie. <laughs> it's like the meanest thing I've done to myself to it's make so, you laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm depriving myself of oh, good god. cinema. I don't know why it tickles me so much. It just does. It just does. <laughs> Oh, you have me laughing today. Susan. Another thing that makes us uh, laugh are, is watching old uh, home movies, and yes. you should get yours digitized, everybody. I For mean, sure. Then you can enjoy like that really shitty uncle's wedding that you went to that like <laughs> somebody oh. fell on the dance floor. Oh my god, I wish they had the video of when I was a flower girl and I took three steps onto the aisle, <laughs> then dumped the entire bucket out and ran. <laughs> See. We could all be enjoying that footage if you just send your stuff to Legacy Box and get everything digitized. You could put it on social media and embarrass your family members. Oh, my God, yes! There's so much potential oh. here. That's so but, good. And also, like, your parents have those horrible reels and, like, you know, VHS. You need to sort that out so you can watch them and have a laugh and Take a trip down memory lane. Right now, Legacy Box is offering 40% off so your family can celebrate meaningful moments at a fraction of the normal price. Visit LegacyBox.com slash brain to get started today. That's LegacyBox.com slash brain for 40% off. LegacyBox.com slash brain. Um, I was telling Sarah before we started, <clears throat> I have a family member who is um, sick and in hospice and... They watch old home movies in the evening to like comfort her, and that's such a good idea. Isn't that special? That is really special. In fact, that's a a um, 
a ritual or intervention that I've given clients in the past who have, uh, you know, spouses or loved no. ones or family members to make a, a like go through the and like make a new memory box, like make mm. a and like go through the old movies and put together a new like a one all together of yeah some fun times that they get to choose. It can be very out. like super restorative. Healing. Yeah. Anyways, yes. back to yeah. uh, I love that idea, Suze. Yeah. A plus, a really plus. good idea. <laughs> love it. Okay. Um. Uh. M- my favorite Substack is. Katrine Marsal. I mentioned her last time. She has that book what coming out. What on earth is Substack? Substack is like a newsletter. Um, Do kind I of know Tumblr. Nothing? Okay. But okay. I've like the- recently been explained Reddit. So like, oh God. I'm very, I know we're very behind. No, I'm- they, this is like, you know how in the, Substack. in journalism, a lot of people have been laid off because newspapers are going yeah. through that, this yes. crisis. And so a lot of these amazing writers have just started Substacks, which you can have pe- like free ones or you can have paid ones. And mm-hmm. so people might pay, you know, 50 bucks a year to get all your writing. And wow, that's cool. It's really cool. And a lot of them you can get like once a week for free. And then if you want extra, you can pay. But Katrine Martzal is the one who has that book coming out called Mother of Invention about how like innovation is always sexist and it's all fucked up. She's the one that did the thing about the roofs of cars being seen as oh, feminine. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. she came out with another one. This was in The Guardian, actually. And she wrote about how wheels on suitcases had the same fate that it took 15 years after the patent of wheels on suitcases to even get into department stores because men wouldn't they thought men wouldn't use them because they want to show how strong they are and just carry them oh my yeah. and God. no women would ever travel alone so the man carries the suitcase and so nobody needs wheels Oh my god, Isn't that, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. So I was all wound up. And about now that. I think about about men's like why there is I love the look of a men's duffel, but they very rarely Me have too. shoulder straps. Yeah. And it's annoying. And now I get it. It's I didn't even put that together yeah. or like think it's like these things are so subtle and subconsciously taking place. Like so many of our behaviors and our actions are not in our conscious awareness. Mm-hmm. They're we are reacting based on old, I don't know, biological tapes that like play, yeah. and we don't realize that we're no. doing. Like I don't even know. The, the, a lot of these things aren't even conscious, but. What the fuck? But that's why, like, if all your buyers at the department store are men or white or whatever, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then they might be missing a product that would be helpful to someone else because they think, well, who needs that? Well, maybe somebody else. (laughs) I think this is the same with everything. Oh, uh, how about, like... Movies that get made. Mm-hmm. This is like representation across the board. Well, oh, was who I would want to hear that, that story? How well, anybody was I saying this? How they did this uh, survey and they found out how few black female movie critics there are, and what <gasps> a big problem that is. Because huge. If you make a movie that appeals to black females and right. all the people reviewing it are white men. Right. Then that it might bomb at the box office because all the reviews sucked and then <sighs> they don't make another one. You know, stuff like that. For sure. It's oh, consequential. Once again, yeah. Mad at the patriarchy. Mad um, at the patriarchy and white that, supremacy. Yes. Yes. That reminds me of the freaking uh, movie that I got really mad at with the two uh, Promising Young Woman. Yes. With the two different reviews. Yeah. One negative review or like, meh, it was fine. Or crit- critique, we'll call it. Yeah. From the male uh, uh, critic. Okay, so it's fair that he gave a critique. I, I, I did hear it as soon as I said it. Um, <laughs> but, but it was like a, a harsh critique versus a, a ranting re- or raving review from the woman. 
Yeah. There oh. needs to be reviewers of a broad spectrum to help balance that. Well, and this is why, well, and this is why having black spaces, you know, is kind of like, an, well, not kind of, is an important thing because a lot of times they're like no space anywhere else. Yeah. Ugh. So something to think about. And you should sign up for her Substack because it is great. Um, okay. So there was this amazing article in the New York Times that I have heard about this woman, but I didn't know all the details. This woman was on a flight uh, from Peru. This was like 50 years ago. And the she was in the very back row, and she saw a bolt of lightning hit the wing. Oh, shit. And then... They were started free, you know, nose diving. The plane was going down to the ground and it broke apart. And she was buckled in to the back, you know, row of seats. And then she was falling to the ground, still attached to that row of seats by herself. Oh in my God. The air, she fell two miles. Oh my and God. The canopy of the trees of the Amazon caught her. And she survived, and she woke up the next day on the floor of the Amazon, of the rainforest, and oh. had to walk for 11 days. This find, is a real story? This is a real fucking story. And she did have, like, a broken collarbone, but otherwise she was okay. She oh. walked with one shoe and just followed the river which is a lot through the Amazon. The oh entire God. floor of the Amazon is fucking bugs. That's what she said. Snakes and... Oh, my God. Ah, I'm getting Just, the heebie-jeebies. I said to Adam, I go, I don't know what's worse. The fall, the plane That's crash, or what the walking I through. I was thinking, Susie. My yeah. boat is the walk through the Amazon. He didn't. I agree with you. He said the plane crash. I'm like, are you nuts? Are you crazy? That's like... <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Are you crazy? The plane <laughs> a plane crash. That's simple. Walking to the jungle. Now oh that's my God. scary. Imagine. Well, you know what? The 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 adrenaline from that plane crash. I mean, I'm sure there's like like there's got to be a little bit of that. Just like well, and you pass out eventually. Oh my god! I mean, it's not like she remembers hitting the the canopy of trees or anything. She passed out. And, um, okay, so then she was so grateful for the trees saving her that she made a promise to serve nature and humanity. <clears throat> she got a PhD in zoology. Oh. And now she, you know, is an activist for preservation. Okay. The- <laughs> this is the most badass <laughs> yeah. bitch. Right. That ever was a badass bitch. Like, can you even imagine? No. And I I do think that I could do it, but I can't imagine doing it. You definitely could, but I would be forever changed, and I certainly wouldn't be yes. like, I'm so grateful for the jungle. I'd be like, fuck that jungle. I'm going to the Four Seasons. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. But um, I admire her. Yeah. and like. That's um, interesting. I think maybe you would. I don't. I don't know. I think you would. I think you would have that respect for nature. No. Oh, well, I, think I sure would. wouldn't want to go back. But they <laughs> took her back recently for the fiftieth anniversary. I don't know wow. who they is, but she went back with people, and they were went to the site where the plane had kind of landed all through the jungle, and they found two people. That were in the <gasps> crash, and they no. were also a strap to those seats, and they were like they had fallen head first, so their oh. bodies were like three feet underground. And she was afraid that one of them was her mom, so she looked <gasps> at the toes, and they were painted. And she was like, "My mom never painted her toes, so that's." Oh. But like, can you imagine? My mom never painted. Oh, no, I can't imagine. Like, just that to the see toes. That? The, 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 How 50 and that years later are they still there? I don't get it. And that painted toenails are identifiable? Right. I don't get Those it. Those didn't get gnawed off Unless in the Unless they misread it and she went back right after the crash, but I think it was recently. It was really weird. Oh, my God. But even even recently or long time, it, same diff. 
yeah, still crazy right. that it's still there. Yeah. So. Oh my God. I mean, she's and miraculous. It would still be t- still be traumatizing to see as well. I just can't believe that. So you know how they use the thing of like. That's like getting struck by lightning. So she yeah. she got struck by lightning. <gasps> oh then, my god, I forgot about that detail. I yeah, mean, like, like I then didn't, the but plane like plane breaks the, apart. The, what are the chances? Right. Then she survives the crash. Oh, then she, I mean, the whole thing is just inconceivable. Wow, it's a miracle. As is the amazing amazing products that Quip has brought to my oral health care. Oh, I finally got the mouth wash. What do you think? Do you love it? Yeah, and I love yeah. the dispenser. I love the dispenser. Their mouthwash is concentrated, so it saves on, you know, the waste of shipping those gigantic bottles. And then you just pour it in, you add a little bit of water, and it's in this really beautiful dispenser, as Sarah said, that can sit on your sink without looking ugly. Yes. And then their toothbrushes are so beautiful. They mount to your mirror, and they send you a new... uh head every three months so it's clean and beautiful and lovely they just have awesome stuff they have um refillable floss now i'm on this mission to get you all to floss so i hope you're doing please that. do I hope you're using, daily um, <laughs> i hope you're using quip um if you go to getquip.com slash brain right now, you get $5 off a mouthwash starter kit. That's $5 off a mouthwash starter kit, which includes the refillable dispenser and a 90-dose supply of Quip's four times concentrated formula at getquip.com slash brain, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash brain. Quip is the good habits company, and I love a good habit, as you know. Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. Moving on. This is just something I was thinking about. I had read this article also in the New York times about somebody who thinks that they solved those, um, Zodiac killer, like what are they called? Crypt, mm-hmm. whatever they cryptic. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Those codes. Yeah. And these have always. A cipher? Yes. No, that's what you use to no. solve the code. Or is oh, that right. the code? You're right. I, oh, fucking A. It's a C word, whatever it is. Yeah. C- and. C- the thing is, okay, maybe he solved it, maybe he didn't. But the thing that fascinate, fascinated me was that he had gone on to one of these Zodiac Killer, I don't know, Reddit subreddits or something, and said he he solved it and here's what it is and here's why he thinks that. And they were really mad. And the implication was almost that they don't want it to be solved because they enjoy doing yeah, this so the puzzle, much the hunt it never occurred to me that these people that like these sort of treasure hunts or code cracking would like kind of not want there to be a resolution does that surprise you yes because i am somebody yeah. who really needs a re- with everything but well actually here okay <laughs> here's where my mind goes okay. two places one when i paint my nails I get crazy anxiety, like I can feel it on yeah. the ninth nail, where ninth it feels nail. like I have to do, I have to, I I need to paint the tenth one. Like it's like I'm I'm oh. so close to being done. I'm almost done. It's a weird thing. Like I can feel this this some this physiological change when, and then like a feeling of relief when I paint the tenth one, which is so weird. Hmm. I don't. Like, I don't know why. And maybe I'm just like, it, like, it's like kind of like a, come on, let's hurry up. I, I mean, I enjoy it, but I'm like tr- looking to get it, get done, w- whatever I'm doing. Well, so and, it, that by that logic, I would think they'd want to solve it. Right. But then I think about <laughs> how I am when I read books and I don't like to say goodbye. Oh. So I don't like reading the last chapter. Okay. I, I guess that's similar. And that's the same thing. And then I know I've said that before on here and in our book club. And all you guys are like, what? You don't find out the end? You know what? I'm like, well, I don't want to know. I, I, wanna, I don't want it to be over yet. And so maybe it's like that. So I, I get see that. that. So that's where both my mind goes. And but, so those are the, the two sides of the argument I have in my head. The, for, I, I guess I just can't relate because I've never been like – 
one of these people that is like, it's the journey, not the destiny. I'm always like, no, it's the destination. <laughs> like, just tell me who the yeah. goddamn Zodiac killer was. I need to know. How but did then, this guy... I think it is the journey for you, but you like the journey. You like to retrace the steps mm-hmm. after you already know what the destination is. Yeah, that's fun. We can still there keep go. talking about the codes. I mean, yeah, because you want to like know why, what happened, what what yes. created this. You're very interested in that. Yeah, but, but I don't know. That just surprised me, and yeah, I, it never occurred to me that someone would not want the answer to a puzzle like that. Right. So humans are weird. That's the lesson I learned. Well, for sure. Okay, I do get that a little bit, but oh, and now I want to know what the fuck it said. Oh, so there they have them numbered. There were four, and two of them they've already sorted out, and they're okay with that. But there's these two bonus ones, and one of them begins in normal English, and it says, "My name is," or I like something like "I am," oh. or something that you know that whatever the code is is going to be this guy's name. And so he applied this system. Mm-hmm. That he believed spelled K A Y R, which is very close to one of the suspects, which was K A Y E. <gasps> Some guy named K. Oh my God! That's it. Oh my God! I got goosebumps. And oh. the mistake. Do you don't think that's exciting? <laughs> the mistake is the same as one that was in another of the <gasps> codes. So that they- is the killer. Where is K? He's oh, dead. My. Oh fuck! But See, still. that feels like like no no resolution. Damn well, it! But it could lead to more. Like if you looked closer at K, maybe then you'd find more things, and then you'd realize, yep, he did do it, or DNA, or whatever. Yeah, look at K. Why look are at- we doing this? <laughs> who's do- who's on this case? <laughs> Come on, detectives. <laughs> yeah, quit making your goddamn feature films and figure it out. <laughs> No, yeah, and the other one, I forget oh, what the other one said in it, but it wasn't that exciting. But I would think to people that spend time in the subreddits, it'd be real exciting. Because that's yeah. what they devote so much time to. It's it's like those people mm. that were in the Facebook groups for the Don't Fuck With Cats mysteries. Right. Like, they weren't just doing it for fun. They wanted to find the guy. Yeah. Oh. Okay, moving on. We had, never followed up. Well, I wanted to um, follow up on our conversation about this question of who's more uncensored. Cause oh, you, yeah. You mentioned something, and I I think that you were totally on the right track. And okay, what I say? You were saying we're sen- uncensored in different ways. Yes. And I think that I know how that is true. Oh, mm-hmm. tell me. Okay. I am pretty sure that the way that we're different is that you are uncensored about your own life. Yes. You will say anything. You have no shame. You'll be like, no yeah, shame. I, you know, I had diarrhea this morning or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and really? Then, I had to choose that one? I did I not know. have diarrhea Something this morning. That most people would feel weird admitting. You're like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I am more private. Like when I can't pee you and my, <laughs> my menstrual cup is in. <laughs> yes. It's fucking weird. I really don't reveal that much, to be honest. Um, I keep things pretty close to the vest, but I am very uncensored about my opinions on about other people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, you're way nicer, and I'm the asshole. That's the summary version. Oh, my gosh. Mine's all about myself. Yours is all about everybody else. Yeah, whenever it's about someone else, you're, like, super nice and respectful, and I'm like, what yeah. is this idiot doing yes. with his uh. tiny wiener hanging out? Whatever. <laughs> And um, yes. some of the people that responded to the poll on Instagram, they sent messages where they were like, Susie, Sarah is usually more uncensored, but when Susie goes for it, she really goes for it. And I was so embarrassed, but it's so true. Oh, I love it. Don't ever stop going Don't for it. Don't ever change. Don't ever change. In the end, I think that you got the majority. It was like 60-40 or something. Really? Mm-hmm. Of being the most uncensored? Yeah. Or the most, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it is, people are more shocked when it's about your own life, you know, because it's like, <laughs> yes. oh my God, she shared that she did that, 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 and like, 
you know, here I'm like talking about my blind dates and like not yeah. knowing if they like me and everything. And like, I really like that about you. You know, who does that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a it's, great trait. Don't ever change. Well, it's, 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 good, <laughs> okay. it's good for podcasts. There was a great article in the Smithsonian Magazine that was about how mirrors were the first selfies. And I really enjoyed it. Whoa. It was sort of sad. That's that, like, a head scratch. Like, that makes me think. That's yeah. some deep thoughts. I, I liked it because there's always this stigma about younger people that, oh, they're so narcissistic. They all take all these selfies and they're always looking at themselves in their phones. And um, this was saying, like, this is not new. Everyone right. is Com- always, as soon as we hand knew there was reflections, compact. yeah. Even in water, you start to see yourself. It's transfixing. I have mirrors all over my house. (laughs) Do you? Is it a look you like? It is a look I like. It's not to look at myself. Yeah. But my mom was like, you don't need another mirror here. I'm like, yes, I do. (laughs) They're handy. And they also make the space look bigger. Absolutely. I fall for that every time I go to a beauty restaurant. (laughs) <laughs> right. I'm like, who's that lady over there that looks just like me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. Um, it is. What one of the things that made me think about that was how it it talked about how it didn't take long for women to sort of be accused of vanity and oh, being extra right. into these mirrors, and yeah. it had said like men started getting. Uh, fretting about baldness once mirrors were around and like Romans used them during orgies. People like to watch. It was like well, porn. It was yeah. like porn that you were right. in at that very moment. And then like mirrors on the ceilings. I wow. feel like, okay, let's say women are more into looking at their reflections. Yeah. It's only because men v- v- have made it the only currency that w- women have. This is true. If it weren't our, yeah, if it weren't the currency, if it weren't like, then. Yeah. And also, I think that men are just as vain. Absolutely. They really are. Like, they're, it's just things that are, are, they're vain about other things. Okay. And, and like, maybe it's their, can, can you be vain about things that are uh, outside of you, like your car? Oh, right. It's like an extension of themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that even themselves, true. like with the, like, oh, this suit or this watch or this, you know, guys. And now they're like, guys are wearing makeup. Like to pretend that it's only women. Fuck off. It's not. They said that. It's scholars- like when they try to say only men like sex. No, everybody's the same. Just yeah. shush. <laughs> just shush. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it says that scholars believe that the, um, the the production of the mirror and especially the mass production of it, which took a lot longer, um, was instrumental in the shift from like the primacy of community to the individual. Wow. Well, yeah. Which is, makes sense, but something I never thought about, that once you could see yourself wow. as an uh, an autonomous independent being you cared less about the group the tribe the community i would i would agree with this there's also something really magical that happens when you go a long time without looking in a mirror oh did you say magical yes something what? very it's what is very it? good like like there's i i will say that self confidence goes up for you me you think yeah, i know Oh my god! Um, every camping trip I've ever been on has proved this, and I don't yeah. think it's just camping. Like I, I bet if you were to take away mirrors and not look at yourself, for fucking sure, that would be for me. For me, I don't mm-hmm. know how it is for everybody else, but when I, because then I have to think about like you know correlation, not causation over here, the golden rule, yeah. and uh, uh, I think, well, am I just excited and happy because I and feel like that sense of connection because I've just spent time in nature? So I have to, I need like another. Uh, situation where I wouldn't be looking in mirrors, but I wouldn't be in nature mm-hmm. to really have some clear, um, you know, results to like on the challenge. On. 
Well, that, I was thinking that too because I do feel better on there. But then I do look in the mirror for interviews and stuff like that. And I yeah, do care. but they don't have them around the house because they right. need to see the cameras. So there are I fewer. Can- and I, I am less like, um, uh, I care less about like my, my skin. Like I'm not, I'm yeah. like, hmm, whatever. Like, I'm not like picking at my face at all. I'm, you know, which I totally do when I get nervous, which is weird. Cause I never did it in the challenge houses, but it's like an anxious thing, I suppose. Yeah. What do you pick? Like your face or just well, any little what? bump? Like, uh, yeah, my face, like, you know, like, yeah, like, like funny. you do when you look in the mirror. You do this. Oh, no, I do it constantly. <laughs> right. This is my we in have fact. Psychomotor agitation because we're anxious people. Yes. Also because it's almost like um it's like a real effed up version of perfectionism. Yeah. Yes. Where, That's how I feel too. It's gotta be smooth. Like, yeah, and you know you're making it worse I intellectually. Know. Yep. But emotionally you think, I gotta get this thing off my body. <laughs> That's it. One hundred percent correct. And the worst is like when I'm nervous or when I then I forget that I'm even like in the presence of other humans, and like, well, hey, when know. you're here, do you want to get like facials or something? Oh my god, I would love that. Okay, yeah, that's just. A, I want the whole. Th- I want to do the whole thing. I was, I was okay. like, I was like already looking at spas in. Uh, where's the funny place? Their name. There's a the Poconos. <laughs> oh my god! I that was I was like, what? Is, where are some spa That's like resorts? Away. And I figured, but That's I was like funny. in Pennsylvania, or you know, like near. Sarah and I are going to get a heart shaped bed and go yes. to the honeymoon capital of Pennsylvania <laughs> for a facial. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to think that's like the, where like some fancy resort thing came up because like I was like I don't know I'm feeling like I should like treat myself you know yeah. I like I haven't really you know when I went to Costa Rica it was like I was still working and I was staying at my mom's house so yeah it was like a vacation of course we did so many fun things so that felt amazing but it wasn't like a like a you know the luxury vacation where like somebody kisses my ass the whole time and like you yeah know, I got like. Yeah, we'll Breakfast make that happen. Buffets. I, I got so, you, boo. I think uh, I'm I'm due in for that. Um, you know? I one last thing was that they said that after mirrors, that people started commissioning more portraits. Be, fashion became wow. way more important, and the wealthy spent hours practicing smiles and poses. Oh, we're, so, so we nothing, nothing has new. changed except the media or device on yes. which we we the yeah. yeah it's all the same so there you go yeah um, wow okay people are vain that's it yeah i mean and sh- there's like nothing mirrors that wrong with it either that's interesting because then that makes me think about different treatment programs and maybe getting rid of mirrors in them oh i i'm sh- do you think they do probably do that like i wonder if if i'm gonna ask my friend who works it, well, it does a lot of work with eating disorders to see if those clinics have mirrors in the bathrooms. Oh, Marley I bet they don't. That they should. They should get rid of them. Yeah, and it's kind of like that thing from Power of Habit where you need to decenter yourself. And right. It can't be about you. It has to be about like a higher power or a um, something outside of you in order to recover from. Yeah. That, that I I wonder because I wonder. If I've not ever heard of that, yeah, ask her. So I bet you that is do. so interesting. I'm I'm very interested in that. Also, what I just saw, I, the, I just had like a moment where my like mind went somewhere else because, um, do you ever get like a little black spot in your eye, like a little floater yeah. in your eyeball? Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? <laughs> I s- I don't know. Did it just come out of nowhere? Yeah, like I got like on my left eye, I got like a little spot that like hey. Eye doctors, listen. We yeah, need what help is that? Here. Also, I have gen- I'm gen- bleh, genetically predisposed to macular de- degeneration. Oh no! So I feel like like I like what is this? <gasps> that like reminds me. I read what? this fantastic article about oh, okay. um, fantastic. Alzheimer's fantastic. because I'm so oh. scared of getting yeah. it. We both are. Yes. And one okay, so they did this thing where they looked at all these people that were over a hundred. And we're trying to figure out, like, why they didn't have dementia. You know, these were, yeah. you know, healthy, 
uh, seemingly well people, when they scanned their brains, half of them had the plaque and the webbing that comes with Alzheimer's but had no symptoms. And two of the things they said that were critical to this being uh, possible is Mm -hmm. protecting your hearing and protecting your vision. My... God. Because if you start losing that, because what that is is information you go going into your brain via mm. your ears or your eyes. And if that starts to become less, then your brain function becomes less. Can oh my become God. less. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Isn't that a good tip though? Protect your I think your that ears. makes me more terrified. No, because you can help. You can start now like being really protective of your... Ears I take earplugs to concerts or um, definitely protect your ears. Always wear sunglasses, even if it's cloudy. Polarized ones too. Yeah. So you. My can brother s- said, "Don't even bother with the not polarized ones." Okay. So this is good information. Knowledge is power. Mm. Knowledge is power. Yeah, I don't think my grandma ever really wore sunglasses, and she de- n- never met a vegetable she liked, so she's not getting any <laughs> of those good but be. <laughs> whatever vitamins that help with that. So I got to take care of these puppies. The fact that you could have all of that brain, you know, whatever plaque. Right. Without the and symptoms. Not having, you're fine, yeah. Susie. Okay. Well, let's hope no so. No worries. There are things we can do. And here we were doing crossword puzzles thinking that was going to fucking help. <laughs> yeah, we're doomed. <laughs> Meanwhile, we need to be wearing right? our sunglasses. Yeah. So I, I was glad to know that though because I was like, that is good information. Really good. Mm -hmm. Um, And, okay, last thing. I read this article about prosthesis. um, Yes. And it was saying how everybody that was developing these artificial limbs was under the impression that they would be more effective if they looked like your actual body part, that the brain would make a quicker association. Oh, yeah. And then they just found out that that is not true. And it's just anything. Weirdly, the less it looks like you're... Oh! <gasps> which is super weird. What? I, I Isn't that bizarre? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What? These kind of things make all the blood drain out of my body. <laughs> Because it just feels like it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like, why is that? That there's some they nothing that, happens for no fucking reason. Well, they were like basically the research says don't bother trying to make them look, you know, just like a body part. That your brain is plastic. Your brain is going to come up with the best solution to represent the prosthesis. The brain knows it's not a hand. Right. And Maybe that's it. That it's like. Yeah, creates cognitive like, dissonance when it knows it's not a hand, but it looks like a hand. Yeah. But it's fine when it knows it's not a hand and it doesn't look like a hand. It's like, yeah, that's fine. But in the end, it was great news because that way they can just make the one that works the best and is yes. the most effective rather than one that looks realistic. I'm for no all reason. for cyborg future. Yeah, right. Bring it on. I'm ready for human 2.0. Let's do this shit. I watched the Paralympics with the women who uh, w- were like sprinter, like the, the That's cool. running. Mm-hmm. Holy cra- – what do they call that? Track and field. Yeah. And the woman who set the record for uh, – I, I can't remember what race it was, but some record – some super fast race and the <laughs> long jump in the same day. Oh, my God. Watching her do the long jump with – two prosthetic legs no. was so bad ass i'm like that is the future that's the olympics i want you know what put yeah. everybody i want all the people who are are you know trans and i want it to be everybody who's non-normative but yeah that's who i want competing not yeah. regular people a super humans people you who feel like they're they evolutions just, of humans do you think, think that they should are. get rid of even the gender breakdowns period because that's a just no, a little bit well, of a problem. I know. That's the no, only little because snack. of the yeah, it really is. So that I don't think they should. I don't know. I'm certain that's one I definitely am not going to solve on the podcast. No, like, I know. I know. I know. 
Um, it's just part but, of job. And one of my favorite books I ever read, uh, the, well, we, it was one of our book club picks, The Sports Gene by, I believe it was David Epstein. Mm-hmm. And um, in it, it talked about sports where women surpass, like, men, and it's long-distance swimming. Uh, 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 what is it? The high jump with the skis, like hmm. a, the ski jump. Okay. Because their body size is really good for it. Hmm. But there aren't many. So I think no. it's the expansion of sports is what we need. Oh. oh, like remember that game, that really fun game that oh, I talked about it on the podcast like year like a year yeah, or two ago. Yeah, you did a new sport. Yeah, it was a yeah. new sport that totally like takes into account male and female like skills, strengths, mm-hmm. strengths mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter. So I think that's what we need. We need more sport. We need to just Who wants to fucking watch curling anyway? <laughs> oh no. The curling community is not going to like this. I know. I'm saying that as somebody who's never curled. Do it's like when curl? I made that joke about that oh, equestrian event that I always mispronounce that looks like dress. Dressage? Yeah. <laughs> and I love they dressage. were like, I got so many messages. Like, it's a legitimate thing. I was like, I Susie, don't know you do not want to. Aff- I feel like the horse community yeah. is, is far larger than the curling community. True. However, I do love my Canadians, so I yeah. do not want to offend any of them. And I feel like Canadians and curling go hand in hand yeah you're right yeah damn it yeah let's wind it down let's oh my gosh i would just keep talking for forever sarah had a date you guys i had a date we'll see we'll see question mark mark how it goes we discussed the uh space laundry quandary (laughs) as it were (laughs) Space wait 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 yeah how many days could you go I think of a fair few. You always few. ask and then I never ask you. I think a I could go few. pretty long. Maybe not underwear, but everything else. Underwear really is the one that throws me off. You're not. Mm-mm. But I just love the image of you like taking off your shirt and like putting it in whatever the like ejector button area <laughs> is. <laughs> and it just hurtling <laughs> away <laughs> from the rocket. That's what it in that's disgust. The noise make. Yeah. Oh, just sweat little sweat particles just like as it spins just like spinning <laughs> yeah. off of it like <laughs> yeah. straight right out into the universe we learned how men are pussies about their suitcases and like yeah. wanting to be all macho for but no like oh, damn look at look at how much i can carry oh okay enjoy Some... that shoulder pain <laughs> sure. Uh, we learned about a woman who somehow fell two miles and survived oh my gosh the badass bitch of the year century um, sarah thinks she knows uh, the zodiac zodiac killer <laughs> is some guy and, named k and Susie's really glad that she doesn't have to worry about um alzheimer's and dementia because she could just take care of her hearing and her eyeballs oh i'm still worried trust me about that but <laughs> trying to help you i at least i'm glad to have a little bit of advice yes yeah we're gonna give up the cro- we're not giving up crossword puzzles no not no up, no so but we that. know it's for no good reason that we do them Right, just to be better at crossword puzzles. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys leave us a five-star review and subscribe yeah. and tell a friend. And check out and our Patreon.com slash Brain Candy. Sometimes we do um, video versions of the show and yes. author interviews and book club, whatevs. Yes. And all that jazz. Documentary clubs. Documentary Can't wait till next month. All right, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. Bye. Bye.